uh, teachers, can you see my slides? Hello? Yes, we can. Yes, yes. Thank you, yes, sir. teacher. Thank you, sir. Good evening, sir. Yes, good evening, Arvind. Uh, sir, I will wait for your uh, call. If you say, I will start. Uh, uh, Ma'am, just wait two minutes, okay? Then from 5-5, five, five, you will start. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Okay, ma'am, start now. Okay. If you communicate, if you can communicate, you can get by. But you, if you communicate effectively, you can work miracles. Uh, good evening to all of you who are present here and thanks. Uh, thank you for attending the session. Uh, I welcome personally to all of you 
uh, i hope i would try to uh, communicate effectively today because that's the irony that i have to communicate effectively as my topic is effective communication so the agenda for today is understanding communication process of communication types of communication uh, then what is effective communication uh, then barriers that are there in effective communication then we are going to discuss about seven c's in effective communication then uh, we'll be discussing about the 10 techniques uh, to develop communication skills and uh, how to communicate effectively in the classroom with parents and with colleagues uh, so let's get started okay so before i begin i would request the, te uh, the teachers to tell me uh, what according to you is communication i would wait for your responses teachers what according to you is uh, is communication You can either write it in the chat box or you can unmute yourself and uh, speak. We can have an interact interactive session today. What according to you is communication? Interly connect with each other. Okay, thank you so much. Expressing yourself, Sandeep teacher, thank you so much. Uh, any other teachers who would want to convey this? According to you, what is communication? Exchange of information. Thank you, Pooja. Exchange of opinions. Yes. Yes, teachers. Yes. You people are right. The communication uh, means there is a sender. Yeah, expressing oneself as one as well as well as understanding what others say. Yes. Thank you so much. So communication is a process where the sender and the receiver, uh, the sender has to, you know, have a notion uh, and uh, uh, he or she exchanges the idea or the notion with the receiver. Uh, so there is a receiver. It can be through verbal or nonverbal means. This is what communication, exchanging of ideas, exchanging of in, uh, information, imparting knowledge. This is what communication is. Uh, now, let us understand the process of communication. What is the process of communication? So the process is where the sender is the one who has the notion, because if somebody who is a sender does not have the idea what he has, he or she has to speak, uh, this whole communication process, I, uh, you know, the outcome of communication process will be zero. So hence, uh, the communication uh, in the in the first place, the sender has to have the notion or the idea or the message which he or she has to convey. So the same message is then interpreted, encoded, and then is sent to uh, the receiver. Once the receiver receives it, he or she decodes the message, interprets it with his own understanding, with his own values, experiences. He or she interprets that and then encodes his own message and gives the right feedback. This is the whole for, uh, process of feed, uh, the whole process of communication. Uh, now let's understand, as I told you, uh, that uh, you can communicate through verbal and non-verbal means. So there are types of communication. What are these types of communication? Let's understand that on the basis of channel, we have two uh, types of communication, verbal and non-verbal. Now, on the basis of style and purpose, we have two-way communication, again, uh, two uh, types of communication again, formal and informal. Thank you, teachers, for your respons responses. Uh, then let's understand deep about verbal communication skills. Uh, now, uh, this is what... Uh, we are doing right now, teachers. We are having an oral uh, conversation. We are having verbal conversation in which uh, I, the speaker, speaking in a language and I'm using a set of words, uh, a language, uh, and I'm sharing the information with you people. So there is an oral communication in verbal communication. Also, there is a written communication in verbal communication. The oral and written communication both require uh, language proficiency. If you have knowledge about the language, if you are, if you know a language, you will be able to communicate easily. So this verbal communication requires uh, language. So, so now next, let's discuss the other type of communication, which is non-verbal communication. Uh, 
So what is this non-verbal communication teachers? Uh, as a statistic data, according to that, uh, there are 70% of communication that happens through non-verbal uh, means. Uh, so like, like uh, uh, every day to day life what happens like in even if our in our classroom when we you know talk with the children or we teach them sometimes that happens that you just by gestures you tell that you like it or you do not like it by your facial expression only you make a stern face uh, you don't like something or you're very angry you make a stern face to children and the children understand the teacher is angry and she has made this expression that means she's going to scold us or this is something we should not be doing so you have a facial expression or by gestures you understand the you know the communication sometimes it, we do uh, do a lot of exercises with children uh, like when they do do well we give a you know this sign or when they do something good nice okay so these are the non verbal communication uh, when we uh, you know uh, do in the class even sometimes i would ask teachers that uh, you know sometimes it happens uh, that uh, somebody has sent you a uh, you know a humorous uh, a very uh, message that has that, that you laugh at it uh, you don't uh, always type a message but rather you send an emoticons do you think communication process is not happening at this point of time teachers i am waiting for some of the responses you can uh, unmute yourself and speak or rather just uh, just type it in the chat box do you think uh, if you just send a, an emoticon of laughter or maybe just a thumbs up sign if you have a meeting you, you or you know something you have to say uh, you have to read something and you just give a thumbs up so do you think communication process is not happening communication process i can uh, you can type yes no teachers yes yes happening yes yes thank you so much teachers they are now the chat group is flooded thank you thank you so much so yes uh, yes communication process still happens it it is because you show it through non verbal means so this is a very st statistic data that 70% of uh, communication do happen uh, with non verbal means uh now let us go to the next slide uh and understand formal and informal communication uh i think it's a very basic thing everybody understands this uh formal is where we follow certain set of rules and regulations as you can see in the picture formal uh, there is a formal communication and in the next part which you see is informal communication where uh, you do need not follow any regulation you can you can see anything in front of these people who are sitting here in an informal group so this is where uh, you know you do not follow any set of rules that is informal communication and where you follow set of rules that is formal communication so this is on the basis of style and purpose purpose now again i would uh, ask you all what according to you is uh, effective can uh, teachers tell me what is the meaning of effective what do you mean by effective okay having an impact thank you so much any other uh, any uh, other teachers something have having an impact yes impressive something impressive yes which gets uh, desired changes thank you so much sir you gave that answer thank you so much uh yes effective means you get the desired result so what is effective communication you know communication is imparting uh, information and you know effective means you get the desired result so this is what effective communication is effective means you get the desired result and communication is when you exchange the information or news so this is what effective communication uh, effective communication is when someone achieves a desired outcome by sharing any information or news okay let's uh, before i go to the, the next slide again i would ask you teachers uh, do you think english and communication are same do you think uh, english and communication is same uh, uh, 
Arvind sir, there is a uh, noise. Uh, I can hear some noise. Somebody is not mute, I think. No, no, no. Thank you so much, teachers. Uh, a lot of people have this myth. A lot of people. Uh, this is the right data. A lot of people have myth that English and communication are same. People have a belief that if you communicate in English, you are, uh, you know, you are effective communicator. But this is completely a myth. English is more related with grammar, tenses, sentence structure, uh, vocabulary, pronunciation, spellings, punctuations. But communication is more about listening, speaking body language, eye contact, facial expression, facts and figures, and even dressing and grooming is a part of communication. Okay, now now what what are the things which uh, are the barriers to effective communication? We Everybody wants to, you know, communicate effectively, but there are barriers. So we are going to discuss some of the barriers today of, you know, which is barrier to effective communication. So now let's understand what is, uh, you know, what are the barriers? So the first is gender barrier. So uh, gender barrier is, I think, uh, the most common ones. You know why the couples fight? You know, every time I think none of the couples would be there who wouldn't fight. And it is because of gender barrier. Obviously, because men are rational and, emotion and uh, you know, the girls, the women are emotional. So women, uh, they are more of, you know, sensitive, sensitive, I would say. They rely on their senses, their feelings, you know, they rely on their intuition. But rather, the men, they think more about, you know, the logical analysis. They are logical. They want, you know, everything, uh, they rationalize everything and they then come to a conclusion. So that's what gender barrier is. You have two, you know, two other people have other perspectives. In life, the thinking differences are different, but I think uh, nowadays, which I have been, I have searched in this, this uh, and I found that uh, gender barrier is nowadays decreasing. Uh, so there is, uh, uh, you know, in recent years, uh, the gender barrier is now uh, decreasing. Now the next is emotional barriers. Uh, teachers, I would again request you to kindly write yes or no, uh, and answer this question: that has it ever happened in your class that you were not mentally fit in your class like you you were not mentally fit and uh, you had something at home very uh, undesired thing happened and you were not mentally fit you still came to the school and you delivered the children uh, do you think uh, did, do you think that day you delivered effectively do you think that communication that day communication process happened effectively or has that ever happened with you? Yes, yes. Yes, I got a couple of responses. Uh, yes. So I think almost uh, most of the times, yeah, right. Most of the time, the, the times this happened. That when you, you are, we actually, you know, we say that, you know, we have to keep our personal life and prof uh, professional life separate. But this can't happen. We are one individual. So what we have, what we go through uh, will come up. Right. So when if we are uh, having a negative emotion and we are upset or maybe we are angry, frustrated, that's that frustration would definitely be transformed to our children. So uh, but we have to, uh, you know, uh, this is a very common barrier. I think that uh, almost all the teachers would have faced. Uh, I think uh, we but we have to deal with it. We have to refrain ourselves from, you know, uh, transforming this. Uh, you know, our emotions, our negative emotion with the children. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, you can't be happy all the time, but you can be. We have to find one, uh, you know, single reason to be happy. If we are happy, we will happily teach the children. So uh, uh, just have more, uh, you know, uh, uh, emotion quotient, which is positive rather than negative. Okay. Uh, the next barrier is a language barrier, which I think... Uh, I, with my personal experience, I would say this language barrier is dealt with, you know, is dealt by me every single day. I, you know, being a Bihari uh, girl married to a Bengali boy, I deal with this language barrier every day. 
uh, you know, they uh, every day I think uh, they speak in their vernacular language. I try to figure out what they try to say. I don't easily understand. I have to, I have to figure out what they are trying to say. So this language barrier is one such common barrier which is uh, which is in India because India is a very diverse country and there are a lot of languages and dialects in the country. So the language barrier is the most common barrier amongst us. Next is status barrier. Now, what a status barrier is? Uh, status or position, you know, in the hierarchy of uh, organization, uh, we have this fundamental barrier, every institution. So what happens is the superiors, the ones who are in superiors, uh, superiors, uh, they communicate or they hinder communication. Uh, actually, the, uh, the problem is they have to, you know, uh, give information which uh, are to be given, which are needed. Uh, but the and the subordinates while the subordinate what they do they communicate only those things which would be appreciated by the speaker by the uh, by the superiors so this is also uh, an obstacle of you know free flow of communication process so this status barrier also hinders uh, communication process now the next is cultural barrier um, okay if i tell you if uh, uh, if i tell you this what do you understand thumbs up we all we all are uh, you know we all have adapted uh, westernized uh, self restraint uh, okay uh, so we are we are actually associated with western uh, culture so we understand that if i say this or if i say this i i hope i'm visible to all the teachers uh, am i visible okay if i do this or i do this uh, you understand uh, it because you are, you know what, uh, you know, uh, westernized, uh, you, we are actually westernized. So we understand the difference. Uh, we know what it is actually. But if I go to a village and do this, what would they understand? They might not understand what I'm trying to figure out. You know, uh, what, what I'm trying to convey. So this is what nothing, right? They will not understand anything. This is a cultural, or rather they would they would feel that ye thinga dikhara. this is what, you know, in India people refer to, thinga, right? So this is what cultural barrier. In cultural barrier, the sender, according to their culture, speak in a language. They, they speak according to their, you know, culture. But you know, uh, later when the receiver receives that, the message that is received by the receiver, encodes that in his own cultural, uh, you know, understanding, on his own cultural understanding, he or she and decodes that and then again encodes in his own culture. So this is what cultural barrier is. Now next is organizational barrier. Now, uh, organizational barrier is one such barrier where uh, the organization or the institution do not, uh, you know, lay a rule for the free flow of organization. There are some organizations. Uh, now, next is uh, semantic uh, barriers. Now, what is semantic barrier? This is an, uh, you know, misunderstanding barrier. Sometimes we misunderstand uh, some words. If I say there are a lot of cranes in the park, you would definitely understand that there are crane that is a vehicle right there are vehicles uh, and there are the park is full of cranes but a crane is also one of the uh, one of a kind of a bird so semantic barrier is one such barrier where we misunderstand words so the words may be uh, homophonic words uh, in which we do not understand uh, you know the uh, context of the sentence now the next is in attention barriers in attention, as you can from the word itself, understand what in attention is. If you do not pay attention, you would not be able to comprehend what I'm saying and you cannot write yes or no either. Either of the thing you can, uh, neither of the thing you can write. So inattention is one such barrier where uh, the receiver does not listen attentively. Next is the physical barrier. As you can see in the picture itself, there are two people, uh, you know, they are very far. If suppose that people that the, that those persons are very far, uh, they won't be able to you know communicate very easily. They maybe have to be very loud, but they can't be very uh, you know uh, you know loud enough to be heard. So this is what physical barrier is. So this happens uh, if you know we have a, you know classroom of hundred people. If we 
any one of uh, uh, you know the person in the auditorium or in the class unable to hear what uh, the speaker says that's what physical barrier is now the next is personal barrier personal is personal yes when you have an attitude problem or if you have an uh, you know uh, you are inexperienced and you can't share anything that's what personal barrier is it relate it is related with uh, your uh, personality okay uh, now we will discuss about some seven c's of communication uh, this is something very important to understand effective communication so whatever we speak uh whatever we try to communicate has to have uh, these seven ingredients so we'll be discussing detail about it let us see so the first one that you see on screen is clarity obviously uh clarity is very important if i tell the ch uh, you know students i through non uh, through a verbal means i tell the children i write it i give a written note uh, that students you have uh, exams on monday which monday i am not mentioning the data here so the you know the thoughts the ideas that i had to convey is not here mentioned so clarity is uh, one one of the c's which is very essential uh, wherein the child or uh, the receiver understands the message easily uh, or and the the sender has to speak uh, his thoughts and his ideas in uh, with clarity so this uh, we have to use exact appropriate words to have clear understanding of what we say next is concise now what is concise uh, you know if uh, somebody as a teacher we always have to repeat words so that the children learn but sometimes when you give too much information the children won't adapt anything right so your uh, communication process also have to be you know your communication whatever you you know effective communication when you're trying to be effective also uh, uh, don't repeat your words always if you are repeating your words or if you are using too much information it will be in vain uh, there is no use of that so we have to uh, concise and we have to limit our words uh, with proper understanding now the next is concrete now this this shows good level of confidence so if your message if your information is concrete uh, your message will never be misinterpreted it it is clear it is it gives you a clarity on uh, the picture the whole uh, idea of what you are trying to convey the next is correct uh, yes as a teacher it is a lot a lot uh, uh, important for us it is it is extremely important for us to give correct information correctness is one of the key ingredients of seven c's of communication if we do not share the correct information uh, the communication process is not happening effectively because uh, you know we are giving incorrect information so correct information is very essential as a teacher it is uh, you know it is uh, very important because we teach the children the children and uh, they have to uh, you know they grab from us they are learning from us if we give them incorrect things incorrect data incorrect information uh, then i think the whole teaching learning process is zero next is completeness uh, completeness is what uh, you know the information that you are conveying uh, can only be effective if your message is complete if you're not giving a complete information uh, the whole date the whole information that you are sending uh, will be ineffective and the sender would require more information so to ensure that you're giving a giving a complete information also try to give additional information whenever it is required now the next is coherent coherent in communication it refers to logical you also have to be logically uh, correct so your message should be logical and uh, your idea that you are trying to convey should have the intended meaning now these the last one is courtesy and it is also very uh, important because courtesy and self respect uh, that you give to uh, the uh, receiver uh, depends a lot in co uh, effective communication uh the receiver might not want you uh, want uh, to hear from you if you don't show him respect so courtesy is how you're being polite kind 
judicious and convincing it is one of the basic uh, element of effective communication because you give respect and if you do not give respect you won't receive respect so you can't you can't be uh, uh, you know this you can't disrespect anyone and plus you can't be biased in nature uh, as a teacher it is uh, our responsibility that we should not be biased with children now we will be discussing about 10 techniques of communication now uh, the first and most important is language proficiency it does not matter in what medium in what language you are communicating but whatever whichever language you are speaking in should be uh, correct so you have to be master in uh, your language the sentence structure should be correct you have to develop fluency you have to develop fluency uh, and then enhance vocabulary. So these are the four uh, tips how you can uh, improve your language. Uh, okay, next is, okay. Okay, uh, I want to ask you another question, to, uh, just, uh, teachers. Uh, do you think listening and hearing are the same? I want some responses, teachers. Do you think listening and hearing are same? No, they're different. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, teachers. Um, thank you so much. Listening and hearing are never same. Listening uh, and hearing, what is the difference between listening and hearing is hearing what hearing is what you hear and you, uh, you know, understand. That's that's what it is. You are hearing and you're just uh, listening. You're just hearing that. Uh, but listening is adapting that with more of intention. Uh, listening is that. Okay, so uh, how can you improve your listening skills? Listening requires more. Yes, rightly said, Manali uh, teacher. Listening requires attentiveness. You have to listen attentively and just to make sure that you are also sometimes you know we, we get bored we don't listen what we can do is we can repeat the keywords to make it effective communication because the listener is also a part of communication right the uh, communication process next is respond in between as i can see a lot of teachers are responding in between which clearly states that they're listening attentively then also uh, maintain an eye contact for which uh, uh, i think uh, which is also very important. And then uh, there is ask questions. Uh, we also ask questions. Uh, the ones who are not listening will not ask questions. So that's what. Uh, the next is, the next technique is confidence. Uh, in your communication, when you are communicating with somebody, if you lack confidence, I think uh, uh, people would, would take you for granted. They would think that you kuch bhi bolta hai. Right. So that confidence, uh, you know, this uh, uh, this is very essential for every uh, speaker, uh, uh, the one who's speaking. So confidence, how can you show that you're confident? You can't just, uh, you know, when you are, uh, I mean, uh, if you do something wrong and if you do not say sorry, does that mean you're confident? Not at all. It does not mean that you're confident. It means that you are overconfident. Confidence means you have to have a clear tone, stable voice. You also express gratitude as, uh, you know, saying thank you or whatever. You can express gratitude. That is also a part of confidence. Uh, and when you maintain, when you're maintaining an eye contact with, uh, uh, with this, with the listener, that also shows that you are confident. We also use humor uh, at times so that, uh, you know, your uh, communication is more interesting. Okay. Now, next, we're going to learn about the, the voice clarity. We are going to learn. Did you understand what I said just now? Did you hear just now what I said? Was that clear to all of you? Just no, no. You understood, Sandeep teacher. Uh, did you hear what I said uh, just a fraction of seconds before? Yes, most of the teacher could not hear it because there was no clarity in my voice. This is, uh, I think, uh, one of the most important uh, technique of effective communication because when we communicate with somebody, uh, or, you know, or 
especially with children when we speak if there is a same tone or if there is uh, you know uh, there is no voice clarity the uh, you know the listener or the children i i, I suppose the, ch the children will never understand what the teacher is trying to say so as a teaching uh, as in teaching profession voice clarity is very very important so in these you can improve voice clarity by using these four that you can see four elements are required for voice clarity the first thing is voice modulation you have to maintain the voice modulation if in any uh, you know training session or any uh, anyone who you have uh, any any uh, hello am i audible yes right now am i no okay. you are audible okay okay thank you so much so a uh, uh, voice modulation is one such ingredients where you maintain the pace you your voice is uh, you know uh, you used transition in your voice so uh, voice modulation is very important it also attracts the listeners uh, why because you know if there is a session you are taking a session sometimes the session gets boring because the speaker has just one uh, level of you know uh, speaking they don't uh, you know they just in one tone they speak there is no stress on some of the sentences some of the words they don't stress on it so this voice modulation is very important for uh, effective communication next is pace uh, pace so do you know what uh, uh, how much we speak per minute in india almost 150 words per minute is spoken by us in one minute 150 words are spoken uh and uh, if you see in uh, you know uh, the international orators they have a different pace they speak about 100 uh, you know words per minute so the pace is different you who know, have a different pace we also have to maintain the pace with them so if you are talking with uh, primary children you are more we are very slow with them so that they understand right but when you are with you know when you are dealing with senior ch uh, children they understand so you maintain the pace like that then there is pitch pitch is also uh, an important uh, uh, ingredients in voice clarity element in voice clarity will very low if it's right if you if you have a very crackling voice if you if your pitch is very high people would not want you know to hear from you so uh, pitch has to be maintained and the next and i think very very important and i would say magical is pause which you can see here uh, the last ingredients it is said uh that pause if you take pause it will create magic i think most of the language teachers i think hindi or english both the language teachers would agree with me uh that uh, pause is magical when we teach literature am i right teachers uh, hindi teachers and english teachers both uh, don't you think pause is uh, pause sometimes create magic with the children in fact even yes even with uh, uh you know with children when we uh, uh you know have role play sessions uh the children also learn how to take a pause so you have to take a uh, pause at the right time uh this is also a part of effective communication now the next is sentence structure now uh, if you have noticed i did not start uh, you know the sentence without just you know with just uh, like that like hi good evening good or good or you know there are various ways how you start hi good evening everyone like that or just just the, just the way i started that you know with a quote i started so there was an opening uh, then there is a body and then there is a closing so the sentence structure is also a, a technique where we speak uh, effectively uh then impressive body language as you can see in this picture the teacher here standing she has a very good uh, body language where she is instructing the child she is uh, sound she seems very confident and she has a very uh, you know she has the right uh, body language where the child is also interested in studies so impressive body language also matters when you are talking with somebody 
next is use facts and figures uh you facts and figures are also very essential uh because if if i give you a data you know sometimes it's, this happens if i uh, if you are watching a news channel it will be boring but if somebody else come in and say you know there are only 10 corona cases in the city you would be like oh yes there is you would be like that so if you give the relevant data or the facts uh you know in your speaking when you're speaking with somebody people get attracted and there is effective communication so uh try to use facts figures in the communication process now the next underrated but very important is dressing and grooming uh i think a uh, uh, lot of times we uh, kashi deals like all, all the kashi de teachers have had this dressing and grooming sessions where we understand that dressing and grooming is a part of communication right i think all of you would agree with me um dressing and grooming matters you don't have to be very pretty but the dressing matters you can't just wear a you know uh, you know a very flashy sari and go to the school you can't do that you have to dress for uh, you know ask for your occasion you can't be dull in the party so you have to dress according uh, to the occasion you have to be aware with the colors if you are wearing a fluorescent color in the morning do you think will it be right will it give the right impact to the children no it will not and dressing and grooming why it matters most for teachers is because if you uh, you this must have happened with you i think uh, that you are you know you're wearing a sari i think all the students would come to you and say teacher you're looking very pretty today right so this is a, a very essential in communication process uh the the two that are left is completeness and error free communication complete com your effective you know you can communicate effectively only if you give the correct information and entire information is given if i give just a short message and i don't give the entire message completeness is missing and the communi effective communication is not happening so the outcome the desired result is zero okay so for that we have to inform the missing information then we have to in provide entire information and we have to also respond on time then there is error free communication for us especially for us as teachers as educator we have to be very sure with the data with the information that we are providing to the children it is very important so we have to communicate uh, you know without any error so we have to double check the data when we you know dealing with children specific, spec uh, specifically uh so these are the 10 techniques where we have discussed about uh, you know how can we uh, communicate effectively now the next the next slide is for teaching so the teaching definition of teaching is changed uh if you are very knowledgeable do you think you are a good teacher you are very knowledgeable you uh, uh you are actually very knowledgeable but if you can't communicate it if you can't uh, if your children can't learn from you do you think uh, teaching is teaching process is happening learning teaching and learning process the teaching and learning process yeah manner of imparting matters yes imparting knowledge matters if we are having knowledge but we are not we are not uh, you know having the effective uh, communication skills i think uh, teaching process will also be zero so because the desired outcome will be zero right so nowadays we say that teaching is 50% uh, communication skills and 50% knowledge uh now let's understand why it is important so as uh, i would ask all the teachers uh, wh what are the prime responsibilities of the teachers what do you think what is the basic and prime responsibility of a teacher can i get some responses teachers what is the prime responsibility of uh, teachers what is our job to educate a child Very and good. Uh, thank you so then, much ma'am oh thank it's okay yes thank you so much sharda ma'am we uh, are the educators we call ourselves educators 
uh, and our job is to educate to give value we have i think n number of uh, jobs as a teacher we have to give the right feedback to children we have to impart knowledge we have to uh, you know instruct the teach, uh, students lot of responsibilities we have as a teacher so how can we uh, uh, you know deal with the uh, you know uh, why effective communication is required for teaching learning we will come to know in this from this slide now effective communication in the classroom to have an effective class we do need effective communication skills and how can we have effective communication in the class we can have effective communication in the class when we when we teachers create a safe environment for the children if we uh, are very strict with children the children will never come up to us and will uh, never ever uh, share his or her problems right so as a teacher we have to create a you know happy learning environment and a safe environment where the child is free and the child can do and ask whatever he or she wishes to right uh, the next comes encourage team work uh to have effective um, uh, you know communication in your classroom you also need to encourage uh, you know children to do team work because in team work they learn a lot but uh as a teacher can we do one, uh, one thing that teams are divided and we are sitting uh, you know uh, on our tables and just seeing how the uh, children are performing we can't do it we can't even stand just right like this Uh, with this posture and uh, look at the children like this from far no what we our job is our job is to go to each places to each team and speak to them communicate with them and understand what they're going through this is the job uh, when we are doing or giving any team work uh, any team work to our children then we can also have an effective classroom or effective communication when there is active listening exercises whether the children are hearing or not uh, you can do a lot of exercises with that like with the children we used to do uh, sit up and stand up games when we were like uh, with pre primary children stand up sit down stand up sit down so this was the game which was very likable uh, you know with the uh, pre primary children so this is uh, an activity uh, active listening exercise we can have more uh, you know act exercises on uh, listening uh, to develop listening skills now next is be sure to give positive feedback uh, positive feedback is also very required the children uh, require feedback uh, they want to hear from us okay uh, okay one more thing uh, i think uh, the t the when i was asking you Uh, teachers that what is the job uh, of a teacher you also miss that we have to deal with the parents right we have to deal with the parents so this is another slide which i would share that how can we communicate effectively with parents uh, as a teacher because we uh, parents are the stakeholders and we teachers are the bridge between the you know the management and the parents right so communication uh, has to be effective with parents now we can't be very strict with them and we can't be very friendly with them so what can be done we can be warm with them we can welcome them hello if they wish pranam whatever they do we can welcome them with a smile uh, and i remember i still remember Uh, the very first ptm of mine in the school uh, i was told by the principal that you should start with something positive uh you can't start with a negative so uh, the second important uh, thing that teachers should remember is be positive uh, no matter what the child is maybe the child is very weak maybe he is not good he is not good in anything but he he might be good in some other things he might be good in football or he may be good in dance he uh, you know there can be a quality there will be a quality definitely there will be a quality in one child so uh, to have uh, you know uh, to you know to have to start and establish a conversation with parent and teacher we should always begin with positivity and then is to foster a sense of trust uh, the the parents have sent their children to us uh, they should trust us and we have to we teachers have to assure that you know whatever is there whatever we are discussing that is confidential 
that is only between the, the parent and the teacher. And we are interested, we as teachers are interested in each uh, and, uh, you know, in their child. So that is uh, very important. Uh, we should communicate with the parents. Then is acknowledge uh, involvement. I remember uh, how did we uh, acknowledge uh, you know, uh, parents. I remember during the annual prize night, we ho we also have acknowledged their involvement. Uh, so there was prize. Uh, you know, there were prizes given to the parents who were uh, a very good parent of the school. Uh, they were given prize. So this is a part. This is a way how we can acknowledge the parents. The next is also very important, where we do not make assumption of the child. Uh, you know, we. Uh, especially with the you know the child's what is happening in their home life we should never assume of students personal life we should never assume that this is also very important and then is to communicate often we also we uh, that that i think all, most of the teachers do we have to uh, communicate with the parents uh, term wise before term lift there is a requirement we should call the parents to communicate about the child's performance and then is to ask questions and listen don't just hear it. Listen and uh, listen attentively what their habits are and uh, and what their what information they need to give and what should what action should we take. All those should be listened by us. Yes. Uh, okay. Next is how do we communicate with colleagues? Now this is also very important. As an educator, as a teacher, we also have to have self respect for each uh, colleague. So how can we develop that, uh, you know, uh, with our colleagues? We have senior, junior, we have clashes most of the times, but we have to effectively communicate with our colleagues. How can we do it? We can communicate, uh, you know, uh, with colleagues uh, when we are ready to learn and teach. If you're not ready to learn and teach, uh, you huh, mutual respect is very important. If you don't respect your colleagues and if you talk about them at their back, this is not right, right? Uh, this is ethically not right, I would say. Um, and then we have to also as a teacher, as subject teachers, we have to collaborate our lesson plans. So it's a teaching learning is also a collaborative work, I would say, right? So to make this effective, we also have to have good relation with our colleagues. So uh, for that, we should have uh, meetings uh, with the, the subject teachers and the you know teachers or all the class teachers or whosoever is important uh, there for that situation. Okay, and uh, something something if the child does well, uh, we should also share it with other teachers. We should share what what works uh, with the other teachers. Then. Uh, one more thing which is very important work together to solve problems uh, you know uh, i remember there we used to uh, do this uh, when before corona i think there were five students at risk uh, okay and uh, five students who are 10 pointers so if what we do, used to do uh, the five uh, five pointer uh, five uh, five student at risk were not very good in studies to to help them, we, uh, you know, uh, we gave them extra attention. So those were the five students. Now, what used to happen is uh, you as a class teacher or a subject, as a subject teacher, you are seeing the five children uh, every uh, that year, that whole year, you looked at the child, uh, you know, specifically and you solved their problems and there were improvements made. But what happened, what used to happen is those five children were left behind in the next class. Right. So if we have mutual understanding, if we colleagues have mutual understanding, we can work together. Right. We can as a teacher, we can tell that, OK, this child is not very good in studies, but he writes very well. You look at that. So this is how you tell the teacher how he was and how he improved. This is what working together will help even uh, one child. And if we can improve one child, we will, I think, uh, uh, do the need, uh, the, you know, important, the most important thing, uh, you know, of our profession. Uh, teaching is a very no noble profession. If we, uh, if we change, if we bring change in each child, I think uh, uh, our job is done, right? So this is the end of the session. I would end the session with a, with a closing line uh, that in order to have an effective classroom, learn to communicate effectively. 
So you see, if you do not communicate effectively, the effective classroom uh, will uh, never, you know, will be only in dreams. Thank you so much, teachers. I hope I communicated well uh, with all of you. Thank you so much. With this, thank I you, Ankita. It's a nice um, session. It is very uh, important for the teachers also, as well as the the senior and junior teachers also. Very good. Very good. Nice. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, teachers. I hope this was an effective session. That was the irony I was telling Anumitra today. That's the irony I have to communicate effectively today. I hope I uh, communicated effectively. Yes, Ankita, you did well. You did communicate very effectively. And I'm so impressed with your presentation, with your preparation, the method of, of your uh, it was very interactive that you did tell us to write on the chat box and you responded quickly towards it. So it was very, uh, very well done. And you covered mostly all the topics that's related with your effective communication with parents and with all these stakeholders and how you can be an effective communicator in the classroom, which is important. So thank you and very well done. I'm thank very so impressed much, with it. Good job. So well much, done, sir. Ankita. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Well done, Ankita, ma'am. Thank you so much, Ankita, uh, sir. Re really, it was a very, very good. And it's uh, really uh, very... Uh, uh, it, it will, uh, it will uh, not uh, for our school, for our community also, uh, we we uh, yes we learn lots of things. Okay, good and uh, uh, very good uh, your duration also, ma'am. Okay, thank, thank you, you so much, sir. I thought uh, I'll be a little uh, late. Okay, thank you so much. No, 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 no. It's okay and uh, actual. This is actual time period, and we have to follow this uh, okay, in sir. our future sessions also. Okay, thank you so much, sir. Thank you, teachers. Your words uh, and your appreciation really matters to me. Thank you so much, ma'am. And thank you, all the teachers. Yes, Ankita. Yes, ma'am. It was so good to see you. I felt that you and I, I did not feel that I'm in a meeting room. I had the feeling that it's Ankita and I sitting together. And Ankita is giving me uh, certain tips, valuable tips on effective communication. Your voice was so clear, your confidence um, and your presence all together uh, really gave me a good feeling. Thank you so God much, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. God bless. It was indeed flawless as Manali writes. Oh. Indeed flawless. Uh, thank you so much. Better quite impressive i should say uh, Arvind, so nita ma'am please mute yourself
Arvind, I have done the formality. So may I leave? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. If you feel, then you can leave. Thank you. Thank you so much. Albin sir, I'm unable to open the link. Could you send in some? Or can I fill it a little later? Yes, Vikram ma'am. Albin sir, can you hear me? Sir, I'm unable to open the link. Oh, yeah. Uh, why uh, you you try now? You uh, you you try to reconnect and then try now. Time try. Oh, sir, I got disconnected. I've tried and connected myself somehow, but still not able to open it. What? Can I? Can I, sir? Uh, Ma'am, uh, uh, because we can't send the link uh, openly in our uh, training group, ma'am. Okay. So, uh, if it's not possible, then uh, uh, see uh, what we can do. Uh, let me to talk with okay. Abdul Sarpas. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Thank you. Okay. 